Welcome to the Canaton Cluster. In this podcast, John Chaldicott opens in prayer. Then the band Kingdom Come will sing the song, These Are the Days of Elijah. Our talk this week is brought to us by Alan Bruce, and he is talking on Acts 19. Then John Chaldicott will bring us our intercessory prayers. And then to close our podcast, Holly and Rachel Farr will sing the song, How Great Thou Art. Opening prayer. God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. Psalm 29, verse 2. O God, whose holiness hovers in everyday places and everyday people, breathe your holiness where we are in us now. Spirit of God, architect of the universe, your voice called out over the deep and darkness and made light. Your voice called out over the waters and formed life. Your voice called out over this earth and moulded our very beings. Your voice calls out in the universe, the earth, and in our need, in the spaces between us. Bring us new hope, bring us new life here. Spirit of God, descend on us this hour, right where we are, in the beauty of your holiness. Help us to hear your voice now, as we meet, gather, worship, praise, and know your presence. May we hear and respond to your voice, your leading in our needy lives, needy community, and in our needy world. In your name we pray. Amen. days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sore, still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call. Lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming his flesh. And these are the days of your servant David, rebuilding the temple of praise. And though these are days of the harvest, the fields are as wide in your world. We are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call. Lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, out of Zion's hill salvation comes. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds. Shining like the sun at the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, out of science till salvation comes. There is no God like Jehovah, there is no God like Jehovah, there is no God like Jehovah, there is no God like Jehovah. 
is no God like Jehovah. There 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 is no God like Jehovah. Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun At the trumpet call, lift your voice It's the year of jubilee And out of Zion's hill, salvation comes Behold, he comes Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun At the trumpet call, lift your voice It's the year of jubilee Out of Zion till salvation comes. The reading today is from the 19th chapter of the book of Acts and the first seven verses. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, Then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about twelve men in all. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will bring your word alive to us as the Holy Spirit reveals the things of God to us. Bless all who listen, that hearts may be open to receive from you. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. A very warm welcome to our Cluster podcast for Sunday the 10th of January 2021 or 1SL2 to identify it in a different way. First Sunday of lockdown 2. I don't propose to engage with the debate around baptism. Neither am I going to enter the debate about speaking in tongues. At this time of considerable crisis in our country, and around the world, I want to speak words of health to our lives as Christians, and to remind us of clear truths about our faith, and the most essential factor in being a vibrant disciple of Jesus. I want to consider just one question that Paul asked. In our reading from Acts chapter 19, He did not say to these Ephesians, Have ye believed? Our faith must either be boldly affirmed or sorrowfully denied, but it should not remain the subject of question. It is sad for those Christians who say, Have I believed? Allowing that most vital point to be a matter of debate. As long as the existence of faith within our souls is a subject of question, we must be unhappy. We not only must know that we believe, but to know whom we believe, and get beyond believing to assurance, and then to full assurance. The assurance of faith, the assurance of hope, and the assurance of understanding. Paul does not put the question, 
If you have believed, when did it happen? When did you first become believers? Interesting perhaps, but it doesn't touch the essence of salvation. A person may be saved and yet not know the details of their, con- of their conversion. In general, it was by the hearing of the word of God and by the operation of the Holy Spirit, but they do not recollect, as some do, a remarkable text or a thrilling sermon through which they were turned from darkness to light. Thousands in the fold of Jesus come to the Good Shepherd by degrees. Many who now walk in the light received daylight, not by the leaping of the sun above the horizon in a moment, but as our days mostly begin in this country, a little light tinged in the eastern sky, and then came a rosy hue, followed by a dim dawn, and afterwards came the actual rising of the sun, which comes out of the east and runs his course till he has created perfect day. Many are gradually brought to Christ, and yet they are truly brought to Christ. I say we may ask about the when and the how of conversion if we wish to be interested in the stories of the godly. But we must not ask such questions as if they were of real importance. Paul does not inquire about ways and means and times, but he does ask, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Have you then received the Spirit since you believed? Brothers and sisters, are you now receiving the Spirit? Are you receiving him now that you are believing in Christ Jesus? Are you living under his influence? Are you filled with his power? Let us look together at what God's Holy Spirit brings to us, remembering that Jesus said that he must go to allow the Holy Spirit to come. The Holy Spirit is the author of all spiritual life. Life does not lie latent in natural men for themselves to stir up. But until the Holy Ghost visits them, they are dead in trespasses, in sins. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and nothing better. Let that flesh be washed and cleansed, Yet all that comes of it is flesh. Only that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. There must be a work from heaven, a work of the Holy Spirit upon the heart, if I am to have new life. The Holy Spirit is the author of all true instruction. We know nothing at all unless the Holy Spirit has taught us. We speak to the ear, but only he can speak to the inmost soul. The knowledge of the letter only puffs us up. Those who exalt in it, and eventually the letter kills. But the inward whisper, the secret warning, the silent prompting of the spirit falls like the dew from heaven upon the heart. I might be a preacher to thousands, but be in the dark unless the Spirit of God has shone in upon my soul. Say then how vital this question is. Both for life and for light, we must have the Holy Spirit or else we are dead and in the dark. Further, the Holy Spirit has come upon us to transform us. We are not now what we used to be. We have new thoughts, new wishes, new sorrows, new joys, 
and these are worked in us, in us by the Spirit. A man's conversion is nothing. His believing is lacking unless he is made to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. Can we be made new by any other power than the Holy Spirit? We cannot hate evil and love right by ourselves because our fallen nature puts ourselves first and distorts truth. Neither can we renew ourselves. Who can bring a clean thing out of something unclean? The Holy Spirit must transform us. It's absolutely essential that you and I should be sanctified. A faith which does not seek purification, does not pine for holiness, is a dead faith which will never bring us into communion with the living God. We desire to live a holy life because he's our father and we are his children. How can anyone become holy except by the spirit of holiness? A holy person is the workmanship of the Holy Spirit. Through faith we are sanctified by the operation of the Holy Ghost so that we are delivered from the dominion of sin and set free to follow after that which is good and pure and right in the sight of God. Oh, the absolute necessity that the Holy Spirit should rest upon us when we believe in Christ. Beside that, there is one mark of God's people which, if it be lacking, is fatal, and that is prayer. Can we pray without the assistance of the Holy Spirit? Firstly, it will be mechanical, not the living supplication of an heir of heaven. You may go to your quiet place and kneel down at that particular chair where you have so often enjoyed communion with God. But unless the Spirit of God inspire you, the exercise shall be dry, the feeling one of loneliness. You will leave your prayer time unrefreshed if you have been in it without the Spirit. Even the desire to pray is not with us unless the Holy Spirit has placed it there. No true word of supplication can arise from the heart unless the Spirit of God prompts it. If we try to do so, and we're honest and sincere, we will soon find the truth of that text. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Prayer without the Spirit is as a bird without wings or an arrow without a bow. The Spirit of God is the comforter and how important it is that we should be comforted. Why do we hang our heads? Why do we mourn? We are the children of the morning and the children of the day. Rejoice in the Lord and walk in the light as he is in the light. Have ye received the Holy Spirit since ye believed? If our brows are furrowed with care, hearts distracted with anxiety, we are to receive the spirit of consolation and be glad in the Lord, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. In the Holy Spirit, there is also a spirit of enlightening. Do we read the word of God understanding very little of it? The Holy Spirit can take of the things of Christ and can show them to us. Now we only see men as trees walking. 
but there is no need to be content with such dim vision, for the Holy Spirit of the Godhead can open our eyes to show us wondrous things out of his word. Let's seek to have the enlightening Spirit of God resting on us to teach us the way. The Spirit of God is also the Spirit of Liberty. But some of God's children do not seem to have enjoyed their freedom as yet. They cannot escape from their prison. We may well ask, have you received this Spirit since you believed? The fear of man brings a snare to many. The fad of fashion, perhaps. There is a long list, and each snare is also a chain to the feet. It ought not so to be. Rather, they should feel that since the Son has made them free, they are free indeed. The Holy Spirit is a free spirit and makes men free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Oh, the glory of the Spirit of God, when he makes us feel that we are no more servants, but sons and daughters. Not under the law, but under grace. Not under wrath, but under love. Not doomed to death, but endowed with life. He has brought us forth from the prison house and broken all our bonds asunder. I don't know about you, but I don't want to look for salvation in a single act of faith in the past. But to Jesus, in whom I continue to believe, that which saves is a faith which does not end in a single act, but continues to work and operate throughout the whole of life. It is not a question for me today, did I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in the year 1962, on a certain evening in a church in Mid-Devon? No, the question is, do I believe in the Lord Jesus now? My faith has continued to this hour and will continue to the end. All my troubles, all my temptations, all my sins have not killed my faith. But for every day, as the day has come, I have continued to receive the Holy Spirit's gracious aid since I believed and was brought into newness of life. The just shall live by faith. It is a principle within, springing up unto everlasting life. It is a living well which never ceases to flow. It is not something I do in one five minutes and then have done with it. It is a holy act which I began to do at a certain time, but which I shall never leave off doing. The next lesson of the text is that we must continue to live by receiving. We received Christ Jesus the Lord at the first, and now we receive the Holy Spirit. These disciples were questioned about their receiving, for everything depends on what we receive. Nothing can come out of us if it does not first go into us. We are always filled out of the fullness of the Lord. For we are not fountains, but reservoirs. Not creators, but receivers. We can only keep on receiving. Also, let us learn that we may not despise the spiritual life of others. Not even those who have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Spirit. Paul, when he met these half-instructed disciples, did not say, You see the door? Be off. You have nothing to do with me, for you are so desperately ignorant. On the contrary, 
he sat down and he taught them more and then baptised them. God has some children who are mere babes that are as much his children. Another lesson is that the Holy Spirit always keeps company with Jesus. As long as these good people only knew John the Baptist, they might know water baptism, but they could not know the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was only when they came to know Jesus that then the Spirit of God came upon them. Learn to keep close to Christ. The Spirit of God will not set his seal to what I say or what you say, but he will confirm the testimony of Jesus. The things of God concerning Christ Jesus our Lord will always be verified by the Holy Spirit. O oh, souls, live daily on what God gives you, and you cannot doubt. Live near to Christ, and you cannot doubt whether you love him. Live in the Holy Spirit, give yourselves up fully to him, for he dwells with you, and shall be in you. I know some to whom today's question is needless. I never did put it to them, and I never will. You meet them in the morning, soaring aloft like the lark in the praises of God. See them in trouble. They are patient and resigned to their Heavenly Father's will. Mark how they spend their lives in service, seeking always to win sinners to Christ. Their common talk is sweet like honey. You cannot be with them ten minutes without discovering that they have leaned close to Jesus. There is something about them which tells you that they dwell with Christ. You do not ask them if they have received the Holy Spirit, but you stand still and admire the work of the Spirit of God in them. Fellow pilgrims, let us yearn to be like that ourselves. If our church is to be strong, and if it is to make a lasting impression upon this age by bearing a telling testimony to the truth, we must not only have the Spirit of God in his powerful acts, but in his soul-enriching, heart-delighting, life-sanctifying power. Thus will he turn earth into heaven and make us poor earthborn creatures fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. May the Lord enlarge all our hearts and fill them and then enlarge them again and fill them again so that from day to day we may receive the Holy Spirit till at the last Jesus shall receive us into his glory. Amen. Intercession Prayers Almighty God, your Spirit swept over the waters of creation. Renew us now, moving us, your people, here in the cluster with Joe, our Rector. Open us to a new awakening, a new beginning, where we look through the lens of the goodness of your creation, experiencing all possibilities in you. Lead us to the light, in the name of Jesus, who leads us into life, we pray. Amen. Loving God, we thank you for how Jesus came among us, baptised with us, and identified himself completely with us, taking upon himself our sin, our suffering, and finally our death. Anoint us, O Lord, to proclaim your Lordship. Breathe your Spirit through us. Sweep through us. Mark us as your body, 
your people, by your love, to be members of your visible body here in this place, to be filled, be spirit-filled disciples. Anoint all the people of your church, O God, that your will may be done and your name be glorified. Make us one as you are one, both those who are near and those who are far off. Lord, hear our prayer. Anoint those in authority, those in the NHS, with decisiveness, clarity and wisdom as they seek to bring comfort to exhausted staff. Deliver the vaccination programme. Reduce the C19 infection rate and cope with increasing multitudes of pressures at this time. Lord, hear our prayer. Anoint American authorities and leaders, church leaders, to seek your ways, your truth and your light in these dark times. Bless them with a peaceful transfer of presidential power. Lord, hear our prayer. Anoint the grieving with your comfort so that they may know your light even in the time of their deepest darkness. Lord, hear our prayer. Anoint the broken in body, mind and spirit with your healing so that they may know that you are Lord of all their days and so that they may know you each day. Lord, hear our prayer. Anoint, O God, all those for whom we now ask in the silence of our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Transform, O Spirit of God, what we give to your glory. Transform, O Spirit of God, what we do to your acting. Transform, O Spirit of God, what we say into your singing. Transform, O Spirit of God, what we live to your creating. Lord, hear our prayer. And the collect for today. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan you revealed Jesus as your Son. May we recognise him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Loving Father, thank you for making us your children by water and the Spirit. Amen. And blessings. We hold before you all those whose lives are being shaken now through fear, through loss, through the pandemic, through sorrow, through uncertainty, through illness, through dread, through isolation, through change, or through exhaustion. Grant them grace and hold them in hope. Lord, the one who holds the earth in its axis and the stars in their place, grant us the grace, we pray, to know the difference between what will last forever and what will pass away. Help us to trust you when everything around us feels like it's shaking and give us the gift to remember that you are the foundation that does not move the one whom we can have absolute trust. When it feels like this is not true, 
help us to rest in your ungirding promises rather than our own understanding and give us the gift of courage, wisdom and discernment moment by moment. God of hope, remind us that hope is needed most when it feels like it's furthest away. In the moments when our lives feel dark and uncertain, remind us of the buds of grace that are around us. Give us eyes to see your work in our lives, in the smile of a stranger, an unexpected kindness, or even just a second or two to catch our breath. Give hope to those who feel hopeless today and surround them with reminders of your presence. Amen. things
joining us. If this blessed you today, then our other resources on our website may be of interest to you and share with your friends and family. Please do join us for our next podcast.